I've never designed any switching AC to DC converter. I have used them in uh, my projects in various uh, sizes. I have repaired some, but I never actually designed one myself. And this kind of uh, converters are found inside everything these days. They power everything. So it's nice to know your way around them. So this video is about me designing and building a DIY flyback converter based on the uh, popular Tiny Switch series control uh, ICs from Power Integrations. Power Integrations are kind of big in this field. They make lots of integrated circuits for designing switch mode power supplies. And most importantly, they offer design tools for their parts. And in particular, I'm talking about their PI Expert Suite which is aimed at designing AC, AC to DC converters. The software suite is really easy to use. You just have to input the desired input and output parameters, a couple of options, and then it will automatically choose the most effective design solutions for those values. It will give you a schematic with BOM as well as transformer design info. Basically, all you need to build that power supply. But I'm not going to go into the details of their software. This video is not about that. So once I had the design ready in the Pi Expert Suite, I started creating a schematic for it inside Eagle CAD, which took some time because some of the components had to be created. At the same time, I was choosing components that I already had in my stock or ones that I could find in my local supplier inventory. I then continued with the uh, layout of the PCB, taking into account the fact that I'm going to build this PCB at home. So I used uh, thick tracks, big clearances and tried to do all the routing on a single side. The PCB was made using the photo transfer method by exposing it to UV light, but I'm not going to go into the uh, details of that because once again this video is not about making PCBs. I got some decent results with a couple of uh, minor issues. I think the PCB panel I used was a bit old and had some problems around the edges. Because of that I had to leave the PCB in the ferric chloride for longer and that caused the uh, issues that you can see here but I can easily fix that with some solder when soldering this PCB. Next I use my drill press and these uh, drilling bits I got from Banggood to drill the required holes into the PCB. These are so easy to find and purchase these days. I highly recommend you get one of these kits because they will make the job of uh, drilling holes very easy. I'm not sure about their quality, I don't know how long they're going to last, but so far so good. And this is how the PCB looks like after drilling, sanding and cleaning. As I said, decent results, certainly good enough for this DIY project. Next step was to solder all the components and I proceeded exactly as I explained many times in previous assembly videos. I start by applying flux with a flux pen then solder in the smallest components and work my way up to the biggest ones. I also had to solder in a couple of 0603 SMD resistors on this board. That's because I couldn't find 4.99K resistors, neither 5K ones in a through hole packaging at my distributor, so I had to go for these. These are used in the feedback circuit for the TL431 so I really needed to get these uh, values exactly uh, right. Here is how the PCB looks like when the assembly was finished. As you probably noticed, the layout is very spaced out. This can probably be compacted to at least half the size with no problem. But since this was um, an exercise for me, I wanted things to be spaced out so I can easily debug if something is wrong. As you can see here, I used the fuse holder with a shield in case something goes bang during testing and uh, populated with a 0.5 amp fuse, which should be uh, more than enough for this power supply. I wanted this power supply to be 5 volts output, so I went for this uh, transformer, which has uh, two uh, 6 volts secondary windings, each capable of uh, 0.75 amps. So I guess I could parallel those in order to get uh, 1.5 amps output. 
but in this uh, design I only connected one of the secondary windings. For the feedback loop I went for the TL431 which feeds back through an optocoupler salvaged from an old computer power supply. But if less accuracy is needed or you would like to lower the cost of uh, a power supply like this, you could also use a Zener diode instead of the TL431 that would feed back the voltage uh, through the optocoupler. This is the first test I'm doing on this circuit, so I'm going to keep my distance just in case something blows up. I have my meter connected to the uh, output of this uh, power supply, so we'll be able to see the output voltage. I'm not going to worry about the Fluke 87, it's a product designed to withstand this kind of abuse, so in case something does go wrong, I'm sure it will survive just fine. So let me plug this thing in. And it appears everything is working fine. We get exactly 5 volts on the output with a nice precision, I might add. It appears that TL431 I used might be a higher precision grade one. So excellent work. I must uh, hand it to you. Uh, I was expecting a bit of a smoke to come out considering this is the first power supply I'm building of this kind. But uh, it appears everything is working just fine. Well, I have to reconsider my words. Everything is not working just fine because uh, it just stopped after a couple of minutes of free running. So I have no load connected. I have uh, checked the control chip and it appears it gets hot. So it must be the thermal protection that kicks in. But that's very strange because I don't have any load connected on this thing. So let me just unplug it because it's not okay to leave it running like that in thermal protection. So one reason for the TNY276 to get hot is if it's switching too much current into uh, through the internal MOSFET because it has a rather high RDS on and that causes a voltage drop which in turn creates power dissipation inside the chip. So I'm thinking something might be wrong with the transformer I used and it's pulling uh, too much current through the transistor maybe but this transformer is recommended for use with uh, TNY267 up to TNY277 and uh, I'm using it with the TNY276 in my project so towards the upper range uh, that means it's uh, capable of more output power so I'm following design recommendations so far one other thing that raises a question in my head is the start and end points of the windings of the transformer and whether or not this matters when you design the circuit. I have no experience with these kind of things, so please comment on this if you know something. I would like to get some feedback before I uh, start ripping this uh, circuit apart. In the video description you will find links to the schematics, the TNY276 datasheet and the transformer datasheet, so please take a look at those and let me know what you think and I will do a follow-up video if I manage to find and fix this problem. As always, thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.